this video is going to be how to mod a PlayStation 1 screen to work as an arcade test bench monitor. So, here we go. Step one, remove all these little three screws here. easier. This one didn't quite go very well. Much better. Okay. These are 
are a little trickier on the edges here, so we're going to add a little of new solder to them. Make it a little easier. These two on the left didn't do very well, so let's fix that. Still doesn't look like it's good enough. <clears throat> Sometimes you have to fight these. Yeah. Don't let that cool down for a second. Hands aren't helping as much as I hoped. We can pry this off very carefully, and I don't want to break it. <clears throat> that means this one's still <clears throat> soldered on there a little too much. So, what we can do. There's no more solder attached to them. We're just gonna pull them out like that. Just like that. Voila. There we go. Okay. Now we can put this back in. 
side. Not fun work putting that cable back on. That's got to be a little butter. said it was going to be easy, all right? at the right place. Kind of a pain, but not too bad. Alright. Now we have the piece. It's been removed. And we're going to test this. And then once I'm done, make sure that I didn't screw anything up. And then we'll come back and we'll do that. Okay, so here's how I'm going to test this. I'm just going to go ahead and I got a PlayStation 1. Just going to plug it in here. Didn't mess it up. That's good. Okay. So now you can set this aside. It's all done. Okay, now we're ready to solder the wires to the connector. This up here is pin 12. Then you got 11, 10, 9, Staggered. So, a little helping hands here. Uh, we'll go this way. Turn. Okay, so we're going to do the top row first, then the bottom row. So, get the wires.
Okay. Okay, so based on our diagram here, we're going to want to do green, ground, red, blue, and sink. So we're going to do 12, 8 first, and then we're going to flip the connector over and do 11, 9, and 5. And then these four over here are audio, which we'll do after that. Okay, now it's time to put the heat shrink on. So I've cut a bunch of small pieces of heat shrink to go over each wire. I use, it's about the width of a finger, is what I do. Just put one on each wire here. This is the audio portion. On the wire would help. Just run them all the way down. There. There is the other one. Let's 
train to go all the way flush with that. It's a little tricky at times. Like that. Shrink over here, so it's all flush all the way around. I'll take it on low. Keep it away from the other. You shrink so it doesn't shrink up. And keep in mind, this is heating the connector up too, so the connector is getting really hot. That's all it takes. Nice little heat shrink. Makes it look a lot nicer, keeps the wires from touching. And now we need to do the same thing. Pull it a little bit to cool it down for the video portion. That's going to be a little warm. Be careful when you touch that. I could have done all, all of them at one time, but it's just as easy to do a section at a time. Don't have to do everything at once. All the heat tricks should be moved down to the bottom here. And flush up against. Flush, 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 flush. wires by function. So that this and I have a handy little toy. Probably every th couple inches will work. You can do it further apart if you want, doesn't matter. Just, I like to have them nice and neat. And then I'm going to zip tie these two together up here.
just gives it a little easier to tug on so you're not tugging on individual wires, you're tugging on them as a group. And of course I screwed it up. I zip tied the wrong thing. Zip ties are cheap. I use striped, striped wires for audio, solid wires for video, so that for some reason, like I did, where I zip tied the wrong one into the side, it's very obvious. Okay, so now we can go further down. Sometimes it won't work one way. enough of it alone down here on the bottom so that we can either solder them to a connector or put them on a Molex connector, whatever you want to do. Alright, and then I'm going to do I'm going to zip tie them together a little bit further down here because they really don't need to diverge too far necessarily. diverge at some point so you want to leave enough so one can go to your audio and one can go to your video. Okay. Now that's pretty much it. That is your adapter. Now all you have to do is hook this up to whatever connector you want for your video. And whatever you want for your audio. Now there should be a note about the sink on this. The sink, you're going to want to put a capacitor in line with it. This is your sink line here. So let's work on putting that next. Alright, <clears throat> now we're going to hook all these wires up to the connector here. That red, green, blue, ground, and two sinks. Once I solder all these on, then I'm going to go ahead and cut these two off so that the sinks are separate. So that we can put them in wherever we need to put them in. Because some monitor, some games have different pins. So we're going to go ahead and do that. 
this. If you don't have a pair of these strippers, you should get them. They're like seven dollars. They work great. Before I solder anything onto these wires, I'm going to put the heat shrink on it. Otherwise, it's really hard to put heat shrink on after the fact. And I've tried. <laughs> okay, green, red. I thought I had black. Green, red, white. Black and blue. I've accidentally put two pieces of each shrink on the same wire before, so just double check. Each wire has one piece of each shrink on it. Push them away from where you're going to be soldering so they don't shrink down. Because it doesn't take much heat to cause those to shrink. Twist the wires up. Okay, now it's time to test it. I did discover one problem prior to starting the recording here, and that was that burger time did not sync up with the capacitor. So I wound up cutting the leads and creating a second one without the capacitor. So it's plugged in right to the burger times video cable that would normally plug right into the monitor. So if we need to test a game to see whether or not the monitor is working or if the PCB is working. We can just hook this up and then turn on the power. And you can see that Burger Time is now playing on the LCD. And voila! Now I'll show you what it was doing with the capacitor in it. We would get Well, a rolling. So I had to take create another lead here without the capacitor. 
and voila, nice stable picture. Now, this one is needed for certain games that I found. I was testing a lot of drama games and several of them would start to roll, putting the capacitor in caused them to stop rolling. In this case, probably with the older PCBs, it's not necessary. So, in this case, what I did is I just added the second connector so I can, if it doesn't work one way, I just disconnect it and connect it up the other way. And if it works, great. If I run across another PCB that doesn't work, then I'll have to go through and figure out what needs to be done at that point. So, there you have it.